Hello everybody and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me Tony. Hope you're all doing well and you're fit and you're healthy. Um, on today's episode we're going to be um, transplanting the little plants into some bigger pots uh, to be grown on inside the Lady Farmer's greenhouse in our new super duper slug fort. Also on today's episode we're going to be uh, creating some liquid feed for them in the form of nettle tea. If you've not seen that one before, this is a more in-depth version of how you start to finish the process of creating nettle tea that's going to be used as a feed for those brassica plants over the winter months and going into, uh, into the new year in spring. So we hope you like it, and uh, as I say, I'm Guru Mafinda. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in a bit. I'll be up there with no tooth shortly. All right, see you in a minute. Hello. Uh, we're starting off, well we're planting on the, uh, the brassicas, some of the brassicas today and I'm just going to show you um, something I've just discovered on, um, on, this, on this young kale and it's that, can you see the eggs, those translucent eggs, now you know what that is don't you? slugs eggs on my beautiful babies so that's got to come off I'm going to take all of those away and dispatch them they're the eternal enemy the slug they really are a pain in the bum make sure I've got them all yeah um, these are very delicate these young uh, these young brassica plants and uh, yeah, slugs, eggs, disgraceful. Anyway, I've got my bucket there. In that bucket, in the bottom half of the bucket, I've put some um, blood fish and bone in and mixed it all into the mix. So you've got a general feed in there. I've not got my tooth in today, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have to cope with it, see, no tooth. That is um, a mix with the blood, blood fish and bone, uh, about 10% coarse vermiculite. And, and general unfiltered compost that we've got out of the um, out of the clover bag, clover compost bag. That's now going to be put into there delicately, put in, holding the leaf and not the stem, and firmed in. It likes a good firm purchase as a brassica plant, and so that's what we're going to give it. We're going to firm that in there. When they get to about two and a half, three inches long, the leaves, the true leaves, then you're okay to uh, to plant them. But I'm going to firm that in. Right. There's our little kale plant. Now, fingers crossed, if everything goes to plan, that'll be a great big kale plant um, in the new year. But these are going to be put into the Lady Farmer's Greenhouse in our slug fort. So luckily I've checked that and I've found the eggs, you know. If I hadn't have found those eggs, they'd have got through our Maginot line of salt, wouldn't they? And, uh, and we'd have had slugs all over the shop. Sneaky little swines they are. The slugs. It's like a Trojan horse. That would have been like a Trojan horse. All the slugs would have burst out, the little slugs, and had a ready meal straight away, wouldn't they? Mm. Right, so there's one in. We have one kale plant in there. Now I'm going to plant that in. I'm um, Sorry, I'm going to transport that now into the greenhouse. I have got another plant there that's a cauliflower, which is already quite some size. It's a big one. So I'm going to do another pot with that in. So we'll have the baby kale and we'll have the cauliflower that's sort of half mature and that's going to go in. So uh, let's crack on with that. I'll label it up so we know what it is and uh, we'll crack on. Okay, so as you can see I've potted on the more mature one. Again it's got the blood fish and bone in there. Only a, a small amount mixed in. Probably about half as, half as much as you would get in one of these little uh, compostable cups 
um, mixed in with the compost and what have you and I've put the vermiculite around the top as well that's to try and prevent any rot, basal rot rot off at the base of the stem I've also taken out before I potted it on some of the lower leaves so that's actually planted the about that deep down so th there's the root stem the, the, the stem where the roots are coming there's about an, an inch and a half of stem gone underneath the ground there you can get away with that with with the brassicas i've snapped a leaf as well like a fool but um you don't want to plant them too deeply down up the stem but it gives it a good firm purchase that's going to get top heavy so there might be, uh, I mean I've never done this before, so that's the caveat. It might be the case that I'm going to have to support and stake this up a little as, uh, as the plant gets big. It's liable to get about two feet in, in diameter um, when it gets to maturity, fingers crossed. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that. Keep the buckets, I mean that's a relatively small bucket, that's probably only about nine inches high. But you want it sort of short and squat so that it doesn't get too top heavy and just tipple over um, there's always a danger for that but um, you know fortune favours the brave doesn't it I have noticed that underneath here we have got some white fly action now I've blown all the white fly off before I planted it up but what I am going to do is uh, keep an eye on that and I'm going to get some garlic spray made up we'll show you that in another episode some um, garlic and oil spray that we can uh, that we can apply to the underside of the leaves but i'll keep my eye on that don't think there's any uh, actual white fly left on there at the moment well these are all there are, everything in nature's out to get you isn't it mother nature helps you sort of 70 percent of the time and then fights you about 30 percent of the time so yeah, you've just got to do all you can to make sure, as best as you can, as you get in there, uh, you're giving your plants the best shot, you're giving yourself the best, uh, the best chance really with it. So we'll have eliminated the slugs, as, as you saw before with the eggs on the, on the base of the little kale plant, you've got to have eyes in the back of your head with this sort of stuff and be vigilant. There's one that I've missed little swines white fly not the worst of beasts the white fly but certainly not desirable I'll have to get the uh, the, the spray on that tomorrow garlic and oil spray on that tomorrow but they're going to be going out now into the uh, into the slug fort okay okay very windy outside today but in here it's not which is good but the plant's been favoring as it's been growing inside the polytunnel it's been going towards where the sun is now so i've turned it around so it's actually the back is facing the sun now so hopefully the um, the plant will naturally right itself as you can see it's turning and facing that way I'll have to keep turning that so that I can maintain as much as I possibly can a straight line of growth going up otherwise it is going to get it's just going to flop right over that's my worry actually that it's going to flop right over that um, but we'll see we, we can only look and experiment and try can't we God loves a trier but they're both in there I'm just going to give them a little bit of water in the watering tray not a lot what will happen is um, the plant will soak up uh, the compost will soak up through uh, a capillary action and it will moisten all of that uh, compost I'm going to leave it then and just keep testing the dampness I don't want it too wet that compost so it's going to be a juggling act boys and girls but once that's all sort of like moisturized I'll leave it let the roots then crack on as the moisture declines inside of those buckets the roots will have to grow 
to seek out that um, that water, seek out the liquid for the growth. And I'll just um, I'll just keep an eye on it and monitor it. Mick had some of the garlic uh, and oil spray, so I've uh, I've treated the the cauliflower with that because I don't want it spreading. So um, yeah, the white fly has been dispatched there with the with the garlic and oil spray, which we'll show you on another episode, an upcoming one quite soon. Um, but basically, it's just crushed garlic and uh, and a bit of cooking oil mixed in with water. And you can apply that to the leaf. It's a, it's a sort of organic control. A, a tiny little bit of liquid soap as well, like a couple of drops of liquid soap in. But I'll show you that on another episode. But that's where we're at now with the slug fort. The eggs have been removed from him. The white fly has been removed from him. We've got the uh, fine vermiculite in there to, stop, to, to, to sort of assist with the dampening off at the bottom so we don't get any bottom rot hopefully on the stems there's a little bit of blood fish and bone feed in the mix of the compost and uh, they're going to get a little bit of water just to moisture moist mo moisturize i suppose you would call it the uh, compost within the pots and that's not going to be touched again with water and liquid for a while so yeah we'll see how we get on with that i've got my fingers crossed it's a proper experiment now. Look at that swine. A little white fly had landed on it. It fired off straight away, like but a little white fly had landed on one of the leaves. I shouldn't get so nervous. They're only plants, aren't they? But uh, it's our food. So you've got to keep a, keep a grip of them. Keep on top of them. I'm fretting about them. Why fret? Glad the work and it won't, won't it? Um... Right, I'm going to have a coffee, and then I'll show you what else we've got growing on. I'll give you an update on what we've got growing on. And we'll have a look at the nettle feed as well. Nettle high in nitrogen, the nettle feed. So that's what they're going to be getting. So I've got some that's all ready, and I'll show you how we start off the process as well with the nettle tea. All right. The little farmer's here with me. Uh, we're not going to show you the, um, the progress on our starts today, because it's getting a bit long as it is. Um, so uh, we're going to do that. To, look, what are you doing? <laughs> Say hi. hi. Uh, so we're going to show you that on another episode because it's getting a bit long. This video, the nettle feed is coming right up, boys and girls. So see you in a minute. Bye. All right. Easy to make nettle tea. Not really the weather for it, as you can see. But when has that ever stopped us? Okay. So what will we need to make a good nitrogen rich nettle tea for our plants? A dry and pleasant day would be nice, but we've not got that. But what we have got is the component parts, which are these. A healthy crop of stinging nettles, which haven't flowered yet, so there's no seeds in them. Some thick gloves, these are welder's gloves, so you don't sting your, your hands and up your arms. A pair of scissors, that's for collecting the uh, the leaf and stem. We use all the leaf and stem on these. Um, not so much the stem, mostly the leaf, but you can use the entire plant, doesn't really matter. Chopped up finely. Uh, a big, that's a 15, so it's a 10 kilogram bucket. That equates to about 20 litres of the liquid. So we've got a, a watering can as well to put the water into and a brick to weigh the nettles down as you'll see in a moment but I'm just going to go and collect the leaf and the stem okay so after just a couple of minutes of harvesting around the plot we get that just chopped up roughly chopped the stinging nettle in the bucket and then we put the brick on top like that and then we fill up with the water. And I'm going to fill it up to where that line is that you can see there at the top. May need some more water. But there's 10 litres going into there. 
This is a 10 liter uh, watering can. I'm just going to top that off now with the rest. Get some more, just rain water I'm using here. Get some more into the, and we'll let that ferment then for about a month. So there we are, filled up to about an inch and a half. Uh, from the top then the, you need a little bit of space at the top because as it ferments the bubbles come up and all of that kind of thing um, Make sure this is well on though Because it does stink to high heaven as we'll see in a minute when I actually decant the ready-made stuff In a moment or two luckily the Sun's come out so I can show you that outside because inside it wouldn't be pleasant at all outside it's not going to be too pleasant because it really really does stink like death and decay um, when it's ready but uh, we'll go and show you the end process that's going to be left now I'm going to mark up when I've actually started it which is uh, on Halloween 2020 so the 31st of October 2020 it's going to be written on top of that and that should be ready uh, come the end of November it takes about four weeks Okay, so for this next bit, you're going to need some pretty sturdy rubber gloves, a bucket without holes that you can pour from, um, some netting, that's an offcut of uh, scaffold debris netting, and some uh, jute twine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the netting on top of the bucket and tie it on with the twine. And then uh, I'm wearing the gloves because this stuff really stinks and you don't want to get it on your hands. So uh, I'll just do that now. So that's just granny knot tied onto the underneath the lip, and that's going to hold on to uh, to the netting when we pour the liquor from the bucket into that, and any other particulates, um, the sort of leafy mulch that's left behind after the fermentation and the rot off. They'll get caught in there and the liquid will go through into the bucket um, So yeah, I'm gonna do this outside. I'm I was gonna do it on my tripod But it's so windy today. I don't want my camera getting knocked over. So what I will do is I'll uh, I'll just put the liquor into that and then you can see the end result all I'm basically gonna be doing is from the bucket pouring it into the Wearing the gloves Okay so there's our previous batch of nettle tea, 27th of September, it's now the 31st of October, so that should be about ready. It takes around about four weeks to get to where you want it to be. I'm going to pour that from inside there into there. Okay, that smells like a festival toilet. You can smell that halfway up the plot, it bloody reeks. But our next phase, you'll need a, a large funnel. That's a five litre water bottle and four bricks just to hold it in place so when I'm pouring the liquor out of that into the bottle there's less chance of it falling over because you don't want that getting blown over and falling over and spilling all over your feet and your pants so that's just to hold it in place as I pour from that so I'm just going to take the netting off from that remove the jute twine take the netting off and it's ready to pour okay now we've got eight litres there of nitrogen rich Nettle plant feed, liquid plant feed, nettle tea. And I've written on the side there for leafy greens just in case uh, mum or the lady farmer come up and they're going to do some feeding. They know that that's for the leafy greens. Okay. Now, the comfrey, the comfrey tea is more of a good all rounder. It's good for uh, flowering plants and tomatoes and peppers and that kind of thing. But for the leafy greens, the nitrogen. The nitrogen rich um, nettle tea is better, it's more appropriate. You'll probably be able to see on there, there's just been a couple of flies on that. We're already drawing flies. It doesn't half stink, but you do a dilution of that, probably uh, one part to 20 in the water, and, uh, and have that as your feed, your liquid feed. So you dilute that down, it doesn't go on neat onto your plants. Um, you can dilute it down 10%, uh, 5%. And uh, that should be feeding our plants, our leafy green plants, through the winter and into New Year. Because they're not going to get fed and watered that often inside that greenhouse, but uh, we'll have the feed for them. And 
now that that bucket's empty, that bucket's now going to be filled with uh, either nettle or comfrey, and we'll repeat the process. So yeah, there's probably about twenty pounds sterling worth of uh, highly con highly concentrated liquid feed there, twenty five dollars worth for free. No brainer, lads and lasses. All right, boys and girls, I think that's enough for one day down on the little farm. We'll see you all later. And if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. I've been Guru Mafinda without his tooth today. And I uh, hope you can forgive me for that. Keep growing with your heads down. And remember, we love you all. I'm not going to actually touch my lips there because I might have some of that liquid on my fingers. So I'm going to go home, have a shower now and get some lunch. Okay, Saturday night tonight. Don't get too drunk. You've got to be up for the plots in the morning. See you all later, boys and girls. Bye-bye.